Hello, we are discussing about gate 2003 ECE paper. Look at the Nyquist plot given for the open loop transfer function of g of s h of s. If g of s h of s has one right hand pole, if g of s h of s has one right hand pole, the closed loop system is stable or unstable. If it is unstable, how many number of poles are present in the right hand side? Okay. So we will go for the right answer later. So first we will discuss about some concept behind Nyquist plot and after understanding that concept it is very easy it doesn't take more than one minute to answer this question. Okay. So let us go for a concept behind Nyquist plot. So we know that one open loop system is represented as open loop system or open loop transfer function open loop system transfer function is represented as gh that is g of s h of s okay which is a function of s it may be consisting of zeros as well as poles okay so we are going with zeros means which appears in the numerator and poles are nothing but which appears in the denominator so both are going to be s plus something so numerator is a function of s as well as denominator is also a function of s so i am assuming that one numerator separately is a function of s that is n of s and denominator is going to be function of s which is delta of s. So open loop transfer function can be represented as a function of s in the numerator a function of s in the denominator. Function of s in the numerator it means zeros of open loop transfer function delta of s that is function of s in the denominator which is poles of transfer function open loop transfer function. Okay. Now let us assume we are going for the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation is nothing but 1 plus g of s h of s. Okay. So where you are going with 1 plus g of s h of s is readily available. So you will write it as n of s divided by delta of s. So you can write it as delta of s plus n of s divided by delta of s. Okay. So this is equation 1 and it is equation 2. Okay. Now we are going for the first observation, first important observation. First observation, okay, which is very very important by comparing equations 1 and 2. Okay. Now if you are assuming denominator of g of s h of s, that is denominator of denominator of g h that is equation 1 is same as denominator of 1 plus g h or not. So both are going to be same denominator of g h is same as denominator of 1 plus g h denominator of any transfer function is going to be related to poles of the transfer function. So we can write it as poles of g h is going to be equal to denominator of 1 plus gh that is nothing but poles of 1 plus gh ok so poles of open loop transfer function and poles of characteristic equation both are going to be same ok so poles of open loop system open loop transfer function is equal to poles of 1 plus gh plane so this is very very important now we are going to make one assumption that is p p is equal to okay number of poles number of poles present number of poles of open loop system okay of open loop system or open loop transfer function which is nothing but gh only number of poles of open loop transfer function on right half of s plane on right half of s plane we are not going for the entire s plane we are going only for the right half of s plane in right half of s plane okay including g omega axis including j omega axis so number of poles of open loop transfer function all also you can write it as characteristic equation okay 
or characteristic equation both are going to be same only so we are going for the p which is number of poles present on right half of s plane including g omega axis for g h that is this is known since we know the open loop transfer function okay can you say how many number of poles are present on right half of s plane from the question so from the question we can say p is equal to okay this is if g of s h of s has one right hand pole that means p is equal to 1 now closed loop transfer function we will write closed loop transfer function can be written as closed loop transfer function is equal to g by 1 plus g h ok so here if you are going for g by 1 plus 1 plus g h is nothing but already we know which is nothing but delta of s ok delta of s plus n of s divided by delta of s so if you are going to simplify this one you will get it as g of s into delta of s divided by delta of s plus n of s ok this is equation 3 so closed loop transfer function we can write it as ok final one I am writing here final simplified version so this is g of s into delta of s divided by delta of s into uh, delta of s plus n of s this is third equation now we are going for the second important assumption ok very very important second important observation by comparing 1 and 3 ok from 1 and 3 whereas first observation is from the 1 and 2 now we are going for the sorry 1 not 1 and 2 this is from 2 and 3 now look at this by comparing equations 2 and 3 ok what we can write so if you are observing numerator of equation 2 is same as denominator of closed loop transfer function numerator of 1 plus g of s h of s is same as denominator of closed loop transfer function so numerator of 1 plus g h is same as denominator of denominator of closed loop transfer function or closed loop system ok so that means numerator of 1 plus g h means zeros of zeros of 1 plus g h zeros of 1 plus gh numerator is always related to the zeros so zeros of 1 plus gh is same as denominator is always related to the poles poles of closed loop transfer function so zeros of 1 plus gh that is zeros of characteristic equation is same as poles of closed loop transfer function now we are going for ok so this is closed loop poles of closed loop system so now we are going to define one more parameter which is nothing but z z is equal to zeros of zeros of 1 plus g h plane zeros of 1 plus g h plane or 1 plus g h transfer function on right half of s plane right half of s plane that is number of zeros ok so number of zeros n means number of zeros on number of zeros of 1 plus g h on right half of s plane including j omega axis including j omega axis including j omega axis ok which are nothing but we can say it as same as z is nothing but number of poles number of poles of closed loop system that is nothing but closed loop poles you can say number of poles of closed loop system so closed loop system so closed loop poles number of closed loop poles on right half of s plane on right half of s plane including j omega axis 
so we are only concentrating we are only concentrating on this part that is nothing but right half of s plane including j omega axis that is nothing but this part okay so p means number of poles of open loop transfer function gf which are present in this right half of s plane z means number of closed loop poles of closed loop system number of closed loop poles which are present on right half of s plane including j omega axis that is nothing but this one okay so this you can calculate already p is equal to 1 and z means number of poles but for stability we know that one for stability for stable system for stable system we require z is equal to 0 that is no pole should be present on right half of s plane that's what we know for stability what we require is nothing but z is equal to 0 if you are going to get after analyzing this diagram if you get z is equal to 0 then the system is stable otherwise if you are getting z is equal to some values then we can say that one z is unstable okay other than 0 means z is unstable so now we will define Nyquist criteria that is one more parameter we are defining n n means number of net encirclements number of net encirclements encirclements around okay around origin of 1 plus gh plane otherwise around minus 1 plus j0 okay minus 1 plus j0 of gh plane so depending on the plane given we are going to define n since it is gh plane we are going for the net encirclements around minus 1 plus j0 if it is 1 plus gh plane at that time we must go for the origin okay so n is net encirclements in counterclockwise direction number of net encirclements around minus 1 plus j0 of gh plane in counterclockwise direction counter clockwise direction this is very very important okay so now to know the number of encirclements simply what you have to do you must go for it. take any point and draw a straight line okay so how many times it is touching the contour that is going to be giving and how many times it is touching the counter in counter clockwise direction look at this one it is only touching once okay so it is going in the anti clockwise direction and it is going through this one so it is touching only once in counter clockwise direction so that it is equal to n is equal to 1 number of encirclements around minus 1 j0 so you are going in this way or you can go for in this way by that time anywhere you can draw okay number of encirclements in counter clockwise direction that is n is equal to 1 now effective number of encirclements okay now we know n is equal to 1 we know p is equal to 1 okay so Nyquist criteria defined as n is equal to p minus z this is what Nyquist criteria Nyquist stability criteria Nyquist stability criteria says n is equal to p minus z or you can write z is equal to p minus n so now you have to find n uh, you have to find z so that from z you can uh, give the concept uh, you can give the conclusion about stability so p is equal to 1 and encirclements is also 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so z is equal to 0 z means number of closed loop poles which are present on right half of s plane including j omega axis so z is equal to 0 means there is no closed loop pole present on right half of s plane including j omega axis that means the system is stable so even though the open loop system is unstable with one right hand pole but closed loop system can be stable okay if there is a one encirclement is taking around minus 1 comma minus 1 plus j0 point in gh plane or origin of 1 plus gh plane then the system closed loop system will become stable so now the right answer for this question is always stable 
So the closed loop system for the given problem is always stable since z is equal to 0. Thank you.